I wish to share with you a journey, a journey that starts from the 5th century CE and continues into the 21st century CE. Many of you may have heard about remains of the ancient Malanda Mahavihara. Today we pick up again on this journey after the elapse of almost 1000 years. This poster summarizes this journey, the excavations of the ancient ruins and their enigma juxtaposed alongside at the same scale the plans of the new university about to be built. The beauty about ruins is their enigma. One never knows the exact size, shape or form of the buildings or the spaces in between or even the life that took place. They engage our thoughts and dreams and make the time and place ours. Obviously, as architects we observe these remains of the past in a unique manner. We look at the ruins and wonder about the choice of their materials, the technology of their construction. We wonder about the enigmatic forms that beckon and challenge our imagination. We discover that the site is at the cusp of seismic zone 3 and 4, which has a high likelihood of earthquakes. We also learn from the brief that this region is quite fertile and the soil is clay. This clay is very good for manufacturing burnt brick. The subsoil water levels are quite high and because of its upthrust the foundations of buildings had to be heavy and thick to resist this force thick walls resist earthquakes much better too The brief also mentioned about the quarries used for the excavation of the material to make the brick were converted into pools of lotus they became places of aquaculture It is extremely important to understand the cycle of water harvesting and the way it is tied to the making of buildings and the evolution of a culture which celebrates this cycle the site of the new university is about 12 kilometers from the ancient ruins of the nalanda mahavihara the backdrop to the site is these wonderful hills the rajgir hills here is the town of rajgir and the huge blue expanse next to the hills are the water harvesting tanks of the ordnance factory the rajgir hills are not ordinary hills Many pilgrimage sites are located amidst them. It was here that Gautam Buddha spent several months meditating and preaching at the Gridhara Kutra hill of the vultures. This is sacred ground. The question we asked ourselves, how does the university that is going to be established in these precincts connect back students and faculty to this legacy of the past? While pondering on the questions of the sacred, we worked on connections to what exists on site. If you notice carefully on the survey drawing before you, you will observe that there are several villages that surround the site. You will also observe that there is a lattice of embankments which carry the paths linking the villages. For us, it was important within the master plan to retain these embanked paths so that in the future the villages were not inconvenienced. The proper reading of the site allows for strategies that save on infrastructure and building and allow reduction in capital and operational costs. From our visits to the site before the monsoon it became apparent that water that collects at these two points stays for the whole year. This sketch reminds one of our ancient temple towns built around a tank that harvests the rainwater. The tank is bisected at its center by pathways from all the four cardinal directions. It is here at the heart of the site that the library for the university is located. While focusing on the heart of the campus, the concept of the Kal Chakra occurred to us. The Kal Chakra tradition revolves around the concept of time, kala, and cycles, chakra. From the cycles of the planets to the cycles of human breathing, it teaches the practice of working with the most subtle energies within one's body on the path to enlightenment. Once the university is established on this site it will become the proverbial pebble in the pond and send ripples of change all around the value of land surrounding the campus will increase the campus master plan needs to anticipate and deal with this change this diagram shows the different kinds of water and the sewage that we generate which will be recycled almost 80% is recycled being rich in nutrients it can be used for crops that we plan to grow on campus for horticulture and all our landscaping needs this will also help in reducing our carbon footprint 
We are not dependent on mining water and depleting precious groundwater sources further. In fact, we are water positive and contributing positively to reduce water stress in the region. The main entry to the campus is from the northeast corner of the site and has the Rajgiri Drive winding through the experimental agricultural fields, orchards and lakes to the entrance plaza of the academic block. More importantly, the entire campus is designed for the needs of pedestrians and cyclists. A battery-operated bus system is also integrated into the campus design. They are charged through our solar recharging stations. They mainly operate on a 3.5 km loop. It has been an endeavor to design an easily walkable campus. From the center of the campus, the furthest building at the periphery is not more than a 10-minute walking distance. What is quite exciting is how, in a dense built mass, porosity is achieved through a variety of scales of spaces. The building area occupies 8% of the site area, but because the built area surrounds the 368 meter by 368 meter lake, it occupies almost 40% of the site, leaving the other 60% of area of the site for agriculture, orchards, wetlands, lakes and retention ponds. In this image, the Kal Chakra Yantra starts connecting every part of the campus along the major axis through its heart, including the surrounding villages. The two main entrances to the campus are located on the National Highway, Gate 1 being about 3 kilometers from the town of Rajgir. In the future, there is another road proposed on the south side of the campus and three gates will connect the campus through this side. There is a railway station that is proposed near Gate 3 and 4, the north entry connects the student residences, whilst the south entry connects the faculty and staff residences. In between the two are all the common facilities, beginning with the academic block, administration, international centre and the campus inn on the east, all facing the central tank or Kamal Sagar. The west side of the tank has sports facilities, clubs and health facilities and stretched across the tank are student facilities and shopping with the library at the centre of the tank. A large portion of the agricultural land is set aside as a floodplain to protect the built area of the campus in the event of seasonal floods during the monsoon. As you arrive at the campus gate, you face the sacred Rajgir Hills and a meandering path through fields takes you to the arrival plaza at the academic block. The vehicle you arrive in has to be parked at the campus gate in a designated parking area and you switch to a battery shuttle. At the arrival plaza, your eye is directed to the Bodhi tree planted by Professor Amartya Sen, which faces the catenary ports linking the academic block with its various schools on the right and the administration block on its left. The porch leads you towards Kamal Sagar and the bazaars across it connecting the student facilities, the amphitheater and library. Beyond the depth of 3 meters within our site, the soil is good for compressed soil earth block. CSEB are produced from soil compressed at high pressure. Two things are being accomplished simultaneously. Excavating tanks for our water needs and the excavated material being made in CSE blocks to construct our buildings. This is the phase one master plan of approximately 1,28,404 square meters of built up area. It is over one third of the total built area envisaged with all phases complete. In this, there are two schools. 450 student residences and about 200 housing units of various types. The campus inn, international centre and various student facilities and common amenities. Part of the photovoltaic array, the entire network of ponds, wetlands and lakes and some of the landscaping works will also be completed in phase one. The brick making yard, labour colony and treatment plants for sewage and anaerobic digesters for producing gas are also part of this phase. On our many visits to the ruins of the Nalanda Mahavihara, we observed the serrated edges of the brick walls, the different kinds of corbelled brick openings, the light that fell on these, and the shadows cast by this construction. This phenomenon on these silent forms fascinated us. Could we incorporate this memory into our buildings without necessarily replicating the past? Universities grow over time. They evolve and grow over long spans of time in phases. We narrowed the academic facilities to three main components. Shared facilities like classrooms, seminar rooms, meeting and tutorial rooms between the various schools 
be labeled as the bazaar of knowledge by sharing facilities we hope students from different schools are empowered to transcend the boundaries of their respective disciplines connected to the bazaar are a series of meandering courtyards towards the lake which are essentially cellular in nature and are faculty rooms or what we choose to call the cloisters of contemplation some of the schools have laboratories attached to them that need easy access from students in the bazaar but also need servicing from a rear street for equipment and material these are the third component and are labeled as the incubators of innovation these three components then become the basis of our design for spaces to be comfortable we need to understand the local climate how do you create comfort conditions and yet reduce your energy demand and consumption these questions made us revisit one of the most beautiful elements of architecture in our country the veranda the veranda is a threshold between inside and outside it is a room without a specific use to us this space between became an inspiration and an opportunity for our own interpretation of a veranda in the design obviously because of the breeze and the shade this space will be cooler than the outside in the hot summers if you place buildings within these verandas the insides of these buildings would be even cooler and require much less energy to cool them to comfort levels also because light is better controlled due to the multiple surfaces it is bounced on glare is controlled if these thick peripheral walls with large openings were actually rooms which contain all our service areas like stairs toilets and vestibules we would save hugely on energy for cooling the overall shape and form of our buildings was arrived due to these very compelling factors if you look at this section through the classrooms within the veranda the empty space between two elements looks like a stupa these practical forms are also symbolic and connect us in subtle ways to our ancient legacy the four elements that make up the academic block are the peripheral service walls the service walls as gates the climate tower and the learning towers where the classrooms of various capacities are stacked up The idea of diversity and plurality is celebrated by the large variety of service walls and gates we have designed. Once combined together, they make distinctly unique spaces. These four elements make up the entire academic block like a kit of parts. Here is one of our 50 seat classrooms and as you can see it has wonderful views to the outside. This is a 200 seat classroom again set amongst the protected interior landscape. Within the typical office areas and faculty blocks we have provided large spans so that if ever necessary these can be open offices instead of cellular cabins or even classrooms This is a view of the administration with open offices and cubicles We walk across Kamal Sagar where students amenities are located There are bazaars with all the necessities for the resident population on either end There are cafes informal discussion areas lounges and places to hang out from the amenity spine one can see the student hostels with their plazas and common areas it is noteworthy when you place the student residence clusters alongside the ancient viharas at the same scale you notice that the courts are of similar size though quite different in layout to become more climatically effective The landscape woven between the buildings is in consideration of the changing seasons and meant to be used as a seamless extension of the built. This view from one of the faculty bungalows illustrates the point. While designing, we discovered that the length of the spine between the student residences, the ancient viharas at Nalanda, and the academic spine or bazaar of knowledge, all are about the same. The teacher and the students walked side by side as learners, questioning as equals and discovering along the way. One of the most significant aspects of the Nalanda University brief was the insistence on a net zero campus. It is mentioned in the text that the provisions contributed by 200 villages sustained the Nalanda Mahavihara. Today, marginal farmers with small land holdings who barely eke out a living populate most of the villages. We decided on a strategy which may perhaps strengthen and allow neighboring village societies a voice in their future. We established a comprehensive resource cycle to highlight linkages between the villagers and the university. What emerged as a stronger possibility was the linkage between the village sanitation and its disposal of human, animal and agricultural waste. 
The combination of using photovoltaic cells during the day and external combustion engines during the night that are resilient to use multiple fuel sources, including gas generated from human, animal and agricultural waste, optimizes not only our energy generation, but helps the university to have a mutually beneficial exchange. This optimization leads to considerable savings in capital and maintenance costs over conventional air conditioning systems. It reduces the carbon footprint of the university substantially and in fact promotes an alternative energy solution relevant for an energy scarce region. It becomes a symbol of mutual interdependence between the university and the local village communities.